when they claim that we hate the military, it doesn't fly. The duck doesn't quack. The dog doesn't hunt. The motor don't run. I've not covered the UK election yet because I'm going to be honest with you. I'm cogitating on it. And we're going to get Paul Watson to pop on sometime either this hour or next to give his expert take living in London. We get Steve Watson on. He's got a degree in geopolitics and in UK affairs. But as best I can tell you, as a first approximation, and I, and I do follow UK politics, 83% of UK laws get made by the EU, and that's not elected. That's the bureaucracy. Cameron has been posing like UKIP, the kind of Ron Paul Patriot Party, that's the fastest growing, but it's still medium size. Did gain some seats. Is real fast growing in the EU parliament, but still they're only ceremonial. But it is an important bully pulpit. And so because Cameron did behave like a patriot, he ended up winning. Doesn't mean Cameron's good. He's a globalist. Went to Bilderberg a few years ago when I was there covering it. The Tories go along with Labor for the same agenda. But this is a referendum on getting out of the EU, and they've been trying to force a vote to keep the UK in the EU, they never got a vote 20 years ago on entering it. So this whole big coalition of mainly leftists and others thought they'd take over the country and open the borders up even more, but they were honest about what they wanted to do. So folks have gone with Cameron. If you believe the election, and there is election fraud in the UK, Probably not as bad as here from what I've seen, what I've studied, because they do count the votes locally. But that's the best breakdown I can give you on that front. Uh, they're saying, why the pollsters got it wrong. Uh, they were saying a big leftist coalition sweep was going to happen. And then the conservatives didn't just squeak by, they, uh, they, uh, they won by a nice margin. Together we'll make Great Britain greater still. Cameron Hale's shock Tory outright majority as Meliban, Clegg, and Farage all quit. SNP wins near clear sweep of seats in Scotland. And I got a sting of suspicion if we can get Farage on, he's been on many times, or get Lord Moncton, who founded UKIP, that they'll have a different angle on it. Uh, in fact, that's an idea. Let's try to get Lord Moncton on Sunday if he'll do it, or one of the other UKIP people. Here's the Bloomberg headline. Bloomberg business, UK gamblers, Trump pollsters in calling Cameron's re-election. Yeah, the Las Vegas or, or, or other major gambling spreads are always more accurate than, 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 than pollsters. Pollsters are pretty accurate in widespread polls that aren't super key. But when you get down to elections, you know, you'll hear this person's going to win, that person's going to win, because these polling places will really destroy their credibility when it comes down to a major election, because they're getting, in many cases, behind the scenes contracts and things. Uh, we're going to get Paul Watson's take on this. Paul Watson was busy today covering geopolitical uh, activity, so I didn't see him write about the UK. He was too busy writing about uh, police seized 10 children from off-the-grid homeschooling family in Kentucky. We were too busy covering secret deal could contain a myriad of gun restrictions, ammo bans. The head of Gunners of America, Larry Pratt, will be joining us to give us a breakdown. We should tweet that uh, Obama launching international gun ban initiative through treaty, or is Obama, we know he is, but head of Gunners of America will expose Obama's new gun grab push we need to tweet that out he's coming up in f uh, 51 minutes we have a jam-packed transmission the last 30 minutes of the broadcast today huge breaking new developments on jade helm that ties a bunch of this together it's really even quite shocking to me i, I was aware of some of this but rob do and david knight along with our great intrepid listeners 
who are really our investigative reporters, uh, have, 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 have really ferreted out some key intel. There's video breaking it down, but we'll have the rest of the story in about two hours. At Infowars.com, red-linked proof Pentagon mapping U.S. for insurgents. Patriot insurgents, we should add that word to the headline. The U.S. for domestic insurgents. Subheadline including patriots because they're mapping it according to demographics uh, with all of that information. But joining us from Albion, from the Britannic Isles, from the UK, under EU control, never had a vote. Uh, you're there in the middle of this, Paul. I gave my take, but I gave the proviso uh, that you know, I know politics are very sophisticated. Uh, and so I'm not going to act like most talk show hosts and say I know everything when I'm not a master of a subject. You're in the middle of it. Um, What's really going on here? I mean, did 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 Cameron act like UKIP and steal their thunder for this victory? Yeah, that's basically what happened, Alex. Um, the Conservatives won because people were so terrified of Ed Miliband, the open Marxist, basically, who's completely charmless and frightening, that potential UKIP voters switched their votes to Conservatives simply to ensure that Labour, the socialists, the extreme left-wingers, and Ed Miliband didn't get in power. So that's why, basically, Farage lost. If you look at his seat in South Bennett, he got 32% of the vote, but the Conservative won with 38% of the vote. So if the media hadn't said that it was such a close race between Labour and Conservative, which they did for months, it turned out it wasn't, then a lot of those voters would have voted for Farage and he would have held his seat. But even in saying that, it was a very successful election generally for UKIP. They got nearly 4 million votes, which is more than the Liberal Democrats and the SNP combined. So UKIP, um, for taking the whole of the United Kingdom into account, is now the third biggest party. And that's being started, what, 30 years ago by Nigel Farage and Lord Christopher Monckton, now one of the biggest in Parliament in the EU. And basically... Uh, it they behave and act like Ron Paul or this show. That's got to be very exciting, Paul, to really show an awakening happening. It's going to be very exciting for 2020. The problem is the system is so unrepresentative. It's a first-past-the-post system. So even though, for example, UKIP got almost 3.9 million votes, they only got one seat in Parliament, whereas the Scottish National Party got only 1.4 million votes, so less than half but they get 56 seats in the parliament. And so it's completely unrepresentative. That's the how they tricked the Scots into staying with the UK, was in a way giving them more representation. So it's almost like the socialist Scots, I'm not knocking the Scots, but they've been totally domesticated, have actually kind of conquered England this way uh, by, giving, uh, by being given too many votes. Is that accurate? Yeah, and it's also the fact that they game the system so the established parties have a greater chance and newer parties have very little chance whatsoever. But as far as UKIP are concerned, they've got 12.6% of the vote share, which is the third biggest vote share after Conservative and Labour. So they're going to be very influential in 2020, especially if Cameron goes completely globalist, which he now probably will because he's got a clear majority, there's no coalition. Um, he will probably become a lot less popular in 2020, and he may have to rely on UKIP to form a coalition or whoever takes over from Cameron. So UKIP are going to be very influential in 2020, according to these results. All right, Paul. Well, thank you so much for that analysis. Uh, on other fronts, I went to this family's website. Maybe we can go to Infowars.com and click on their website in the article to show folks more photos. Police seize 10 children from off-the-grid homeschool family. Uh, they're out there running a you know, gardening operation. Parents work uh, part of the time, uh, raise the kids, uh, look like really healthy kids. But it's in the CPS own report. They're saying they're unvaccinated and that, quote, they didn't have proof they were getting full schooling. There's no law against homeschooling, not yet. They're trying to pass them in, what, three different states right now. Uh, but this is just crazy, and I see these articles all the time. There's a new one in World Net Daily today. 
where they show up and say, we want to see your vaccine records and we want to make sure that you don't have any guns. Well, you're allowed to have guns and you're allowed to not vaccinate. So the, the government's claiming that it's neglect when it's not neglect. Plus, there's no judge or jury. And if you go to their website, you can see photos that they were posting. That's their website. I think they have a Facebook there that I looked at this morning. I know there's a link on this article uh, that, that, that shows the family with their traditional lifestyle uh, and the stuff they do. I mean, this is the description.